Hello and welcome to Newswire Afghanistan special. I am Jawad Hami. The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan's capital Kabul has not only surprised the world at large, but has sent shock waves in some countries such as India. Now, New Delhi seems clearly worried about the sudden turn of events, and many there are seeing it a big defeat for them in Afghanistan. India's former ambassador to Afghanistan, Gautam Makupadhyaya, has said that this potential geopolitical realignment could change things upside down. Now, previously, he had said the Western model has nothing to do with Afghanistan's interests because of Pakistan's inclusion in the Afghan reconciliation. Not only this, Indian media clearly seems to have been rattled by recent developments in Afghanistan. And to talk more about this, we are joined by Mr. Asif Durani, former ambassador, and Brigadier Farooq Hamid Khan, who is the defense analyst. Thank you very much for your time, both of you gentlemen at Newswire. I'll begin the discussion with you, Durani. India was never, never happy with Pakistan's role in the Afghan peace and reconciliation process. How do you analyze Mukhopadhyay's statement? Well, it is just not Mr. Mokopadaya. There are other former ambassadors, uh, mostly who had served in Afghanistan, including Rafael, have been commenting about the Indian policy towards uh, Afghanistan as well as the emerging scenario. Since Indians had put all the act into one box. And their prime objective was to improve Afghan territory, Afghan soil against Pakistan. So therefore, the, their lamentation about their investments in Afghanistan should be read in a manner that while they talk about $3 billion of investment in Afghanistan, it is actually they are lamenting about their, their investment in the uh, espionage activities, which they, in fact, invested in Afghanistan, and they made their assets uh, in, in order to create trouble in Pakistani Baluchistan and uh, through the TTP in our tribal areas, mostly. So now uh, uh, their loss would be that if Taliban come there, I mean, I'm... Uh, I would still be cautiously optimistic about Taliban's uh, arrival on the scene because uh, uh, they'll be treated against the Taliban and Taliban have yet to come up uh, 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 and to show their performance uh, as per the international standards which have been set. And uh, their recognition would be of, of greater importance. But having said that, uh, Indians definitely uh, they uh, uh, they would be uh, you know scratching their head and uh, they would not sit idle so I think they would also uh, try to revive their links and especially they are likely to in in instigate those forces with uh, which they have been aligned during the yes. Okay, Brigadier Khan, why do you think Indians seem rattled by the Taliban takeover of Kabul? Thank you for inviting me to your program. Uh, I think the Indians are shell-shocked. They, they just don't know what has uh, struck them. I came across a very good post in the social media yesterday which stated that uh, India has been hit by a 10.0 earthquake with the epicenter from Kabul. So, uh, I think the it has been a great setback for the Indian military establishment, for their intelligence establishment, the RAW, and of course, for Mr. Ajit Doval, the key advisor and the right-hand man of Mr. Moody, who is the mastermind for uh, exporting and sponsoring and funding uh, proxies uh, in, uh, and military groups from Afghanistan into Pakistan uh, for terrorist activity, especially as the ambassador Saab just said, Balochistan and in our province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa that borders Afghanistan. 
So, they invested so much in that infrastructure, the terrorist infrastructure in Afghanistan. And then, do not forget uh, the, the group called Daesh, which of course the Americans and perhaps Israelis, they all, uh, and the Indians together, they brought them into Afghanistan uh, so as to create more, use them to create trouble for Pakistan. So, Bagheria Khan, uh, when, uh, when, when you just have alluded to the fact that they've invested uh, over there in Afghanistan over the last uh, uh, two decades, and the international media seems to take a line of Indians as well, they uh, consider that India, when Indians claim themselves that they had invested heavily in Afghanistan's reconstruction, which you have dubbed as uh, something, uh, the uh, reconstruction of the infrastructure uh, which was used for maligning Pakistan or using the Afghan soil uh, for uh, this uh, uh, maligning Pakistan and uh, terrorist and sabotage activities in Pakistan. So my question to you is, the, the thing they claim that they have invested heavily in the reconstruction uh, of Afghanistan, was that just a cover for the nefarious designs? Can you elaborate that one in more detail? Yes, uh, the two to three billion dollars that the Indians invested in the infrastructure projects in Afghanistan, a dam, their parliament building, and uh, other such, uh, some roads. That was, you can say it was a cover, but that gave them a good present, a reason, a justification to, be, to increase the presence in Afghanistan. And there, uh, spread their tentacles, especially in, uh, in the south and southeast area bordering Pakistan, uh, to sponsor the, uh, support the proxies, uh, train, equip, and fund those proxies uh, against Pakistan. The Tariq Taliban Pakistan, the Daesh, and some other splinter groups. So I would say that they've been pretty successful for the last so many years, because uh, just, uh, you've got the barb, uh, double fenced uh, wiring, a uh, wire along the Pak Afghan border, only uh, completed uh, recently. But they still managed to get some people across and to have uh, uh, communication link up with the, some of their uh, sleeper cells, the proxy that you can say in Balochistan and KP. So what is troubling them now is that Afghan Taliban have repeatedly, have repeatedly reiterated, especially in their very impressive press conference yesterday, which was a strategic communication with the international community about what are going to be their policies uh, from now onwards. And uh, the Afghan Taliban have made it, the Taliban have made it clear that they will not allow their soil to be used for any kind of terrorism or terrorist activity against any of the neighbors. Now, this should satisfy, this should come as a good news for Pakistan, for China, well, for Central Asian states, and even the United States uh, which has always been saying that we don't want Afghanistan to be the hotbed of, uh, um, uh, you know, and the uh, of terrorist activities, especially any group targeting, trying to target the interests of the United States. So that is where the Indians are going to suffer. They will still come back to maintain some form of a link with the new with the Taliban government uh, to engage. The Taliban have said in the press conference yesterday or earlier. Uh, day before uh, yesterday, that uh, they will, they don't mind engaging with the Indians, but it has to be uh, two sovereign states. Uh, there will be no interference uh, by Indians in their domestic matters, and obviously giving the Indians the very clear indication, uh, uh, cautioning them that no more of the terrorism business of supporting terrorists and groups against Pakistan as they've been doing in the past. So I think this is where the Indians have suffered a setback because now the Afghan soil, the Afghan soil is not available to them for organizing, for orchestrating and supporting such activities. And another thing, the Indians along with the Afghan, rogue elements in the Afghan intelligence were also uh, very close to the Indian uh, uh, intelligence agencies and the establishment. They were also funding and sponsoring the so-called Pashtun Tahafal movement, the PTM. Now, uh, the PTM is going to be, well, uh, without any support, and should be. And I'm sure the Afghan Taliban, their government, will ensure 
that uh, I don't expect them. Nobody in Pakistan expects the Taliban that they would uh, do what Ashraf Ghani and his people were doing for the last so many years in trying to uh, sponsor this Pashtun uh, Tahafuz movement, the, the so-called uh, Pashtun Tahafuz movement, uh, via uh, many Afghan groups, Afghan refugee groups that were settled in this area, uh, along with uh, some uh, uh, nationalists, so-called nationalists. <clears throat> so uh, uh, the militant groups in Balochistan, we, who are still on the run, and but there are remnants of their uh, of them, and uh, a similar uh, PTM. I think they're going to uh, suffer the most, and they are the people who are going to feel fatherless. That they don't have any sponsors. The one Taliban are going, not going to let this happen. And I, I think okay. this is one is going to be one of the main demands uh, from the government of Pakistan, uh, from the Taliban, that look, this has to stop now. And I'm sure it is going to stop uh, because of what we're hearing uh, from the Taliban in the last three, four days. And this is going to be an, a very important factor. And Pakistan, uh, other than the inclusive government uh, com a commitment by the uh, uh, Taliban leadership, that they would encourage others also to join them in this government, even their enemies in the past, their politicians. Uh, I think uh, Pakistan and these two factors would be important uh, in their recognition as far as Pakistan is concerned. Okay, Brigadier Khan, you've just alluded to very important points. Uh, I'll come back to you uh, about this particular thing that you are so confident uh, about the Afghan Taliban that they won't let the Afghan soil to be used, uh, especially, especially against Pakistan. I'll come to this point. For now, uh, I'll uh, go to Mr. Durrani as uh, Mr. Uh, Brigadier Khan has just alluded to the fact that there are ch chances of the engagements between India and the Afghan Taliban. How do you see that? Is there any likelihood of the f future engagements between Indian government and the Afghan Taliban? And what, what could be the likely contours of that engagement? Well, I think uh, it has sovereign countries. Uh, it's uh, Afghanistan's right to have relationship with any country and uh, but of course uh, is also uh, that Ansan which has so far been um, a place for the Indians to use uh, their Afghan assets against Pakistan so those assurances would be important and Afghanistan's neutrality would be important and uh, we have to be very careful well, uh, we are talking about the situation can change. So there is no need for to be euphoric that what is happening in uh, one sun is uh, definitely going to support. Uh, I, I, will, I will not give that time. Uh, I'll be particularly Okay, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Durrani, Mr. Durrani, uh, I I can't hear you clearly. So I, I'll yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, it's better. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so I I'll be cautiously optimistic, and I'm not going to be euphoric about what is happening in Afghanistan. We have to wait and watch uh, how the things are unfolding there. And so far, yes, whatever Taliban have been telling the world sounds music to our ears, but uh, we have to wait and watch. And uh, we also have to uh, be careful that it is just not our Taliban, whether they, when, once they get the recognition from the international community, only then their legitimacy at the international level would be accepted. So therefore, we have to be very cautious, whether in our, in our analyses or our officials, our ministers, are those who are especially from the armed forces who have been serving there and now they have become analysts, they have to be extra careful because this is the, the allegation on Pakistan that we have been supporting, supportive of the Taliban. So we have to be very, very careful. Yes. 
Okay, Brigadier Khan, what do you have to say about uh, this particular thing? Because Mr. Durrani is of the view that the uh, people have served at the high uh, ranks over here in Pakistan, whether uh, that be the civilian leadership or the armed forces. Since Pakistan has been accused of having supported the Taliban, so we should be uh, conscious about this thing. And we, uh, although there had been a turn of events over there in uh, Afghanistan, we should be uh, cautiously optimistic rather than euphoric. Look, uh, being cautiously optimistic is a term that uh, is very dear to our uh, diplomats and our former uh, foreign office uh, uh, people. I, as a military man, I would like to see the ground reality. And I think the Taliban, they made a commitment repeatedly in the last three days. Uh, I don't think that they're trying to hoodwink the international community. I don't think that they, they fully understand Pakistan's uh, security concerns. They fully understand Pakistan's security sensitivities. And I don't think that, and I, let me also add, that uh, when we talk about international recognition, if the United States and the United Kingdom do not recognize uh, the Taliban government, whatever form it comes up in the coming days, does not mean that the Taliban have not been recognized. Well, if the Russians recognize them. The Chinese, Pakistan, Turks, Iranians, I don't know about Saudi Arabia, they're still very, very quiet. They're not giving any statement. Uh, so that would mean a lot. Three nuclear powers, Pakistan, Russia, and China, if they recognize uh, the Taliban government, so that, uh, that should uh, show the way to many other people. The Americans and the British right now are, are like wounded, uh, you know, snakes, the, especially the United States. Obviously, uh, it's like rubbing salt on their wounds if uh, they have to recognize uh, the people whom they ousted in, the, uh, in 2001. And once they leave, they, you know, they sort of facilitate in a way that uh, they had an agreement with them in Doha. The same people across the table. And now the same people are in power in Kabul. So the United States may take a little time because the wound has got to heal. See what is happening in the United States. President Biden had to specially give a statement uh, and to uh, calm down the people in the United States that after 20 years, this is what we've achieved in Afghanistan. And I'm seeing the videos for the last three days, the tons and tons and tons of ammunition, weapons of all kinds that obviously fall into the hands of the Taliban. Uh, it's a big price. They don't have to buy all these weapons again. Well, I don't know what is going to be the future of their army, how is that going to come up, but that is to be seen. And see all those, um, uh, the, the money that we see that is going into the Taliban hands. So the Taliban this time, are I find them different what they were. Remember, there's the fact of the media. There was no media like this, uh, including the social media, uh, in the late 90s when the Taliban came to power. This time, things are different. And they also know the importance of the media. Every Afghani, like people in Pakistan all the world over, have smartphones, mobile phones. And they know that one wrong action, one wrong action is going to lead to a lot of international uh, uh, condemnation. And I just want to take you back for a second. You remember when the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, when they had captured Sawat, there was that one video of a woman in Sawat who was being beaten up by those people of the tehreek e taliban And that sent a wave of condemnation, a wave of uh, anger throughout the world, especially Pakistan. And that is when we decided to go in for the Operation Rahe Rast in Sawat to clear up and to defeat, you know, that was a long process. Rahe Rast uh, followed other operations in the uh, tribal areas. My point is this, the Taliban understand uh, that this, this time things are different. They have to implement what they have stated in their policy uh, press conference uh, yesterday. And which, of course, was very good for our ears. It was good for the international community. They wanted to hear this, and they're surprised also as to how they're hearing all this coming from the Taliban. And what was more surprising for everybody was that within hours of the press conference, 
We saw the media reporters, female reporters, with the hijab on the streets, with the mics in their hand. Uh, on the uh, uh, state television, we see a hijab anchor, and a hijab covered anchor, and she's interviewing a, a Taliban member. So things have changed. I think that they're more moderate. They understand the sensitivities of the international world. They understand the sensitivities related to human rights. They understand the sensitivities related to the security um, the consideration of the neighbors, whether it is Pakistan, Iran, China, or Russia. So, Bagheera Khan, I'll come to this particular dimension. Uh, the last thing that you just mentioned, we'll go back to the, uh, that one as well. For now, I'll go to Mr. Durrani. As you have said, uh, from the previous, uh, the first press conference they did, uh, they seem to be quite changed and they now understand the importance of media as well and uh, we have all seen a uh, female news anchor with a hijab interviewing one of the Afghan official uh, Taliban officials so uh, uh, Mr. Durrani do you uh, agree uh, with Brigadier, uh, Brigadier Khan's uh, premise that they seems to be more moderate now and uh, they seem uh, to have changed do you think they have learned the lessons over time especially uh, during the last two decades I wish uh, uh, it happens like this in future as well. Yes, it has been quite a pleasant surprise. So what uh, a Taliban uh, spokesperson uh, Zabullah Mujahid was saying yesterday, I, as I said earlier, it all sounded music to our ears. That is there. But uh, again, uh, I would reiterate that I'll be very cautious because uh, we are talking, discussing politics. Politics changes. It changes uh, with the changes uh, in circumstances. And uh, Taliban are not the island, and they are not the center of universe. So they will have to, in fact, trim their sails as per the winds. So therefore, you have to be very, very careful. And Taliban, right now, they are making right noises. That's uh, quite good. But the actual test will start when they would start rolling. And then if uh, the, their uh, uh, statement or narrative is correct, that they want an inclusive setup in the country, then uh, we have to look at the inclusive setup, how it runs the affairs of the country. So there's still a big distance between the cup and the lip. So that's why I would say I would not be so euphoric. I will not talk on behalf of the Taliban that what they are doing is correct or is the gospel. It is not. We are discussing politics. We are not discussing something, uh, uh, some religious scriptures, that they will stick to their uh, words or what. It can change. It has changed in the past. It will keep on changing because politics is a dynamic phenomenon. So I don't have to, in fact, uh, emphasize on but that. But Mr. Durrani, Mr. Durrani, I, I, I'll uh, uh, t have to take a short break over here. And after the break, uh, when we'll come, uh, I discuss with you, since uh, a lot many people who consider it uh, uh, that there is something positive that can be seen uh, in the Taliban posturing right now, and they seem to have turned out to be moderate. Uh, so what likely changes uh, could be there? But uh, uh, right after a short break, uh, please stay tuned. Welcome back to Newswire Afghanistan Special. I'm joined by Ambassador Asif Durrani and Brigadier Farooq Hamid Khan. The discussion um, entered into a very interesting phase before the break uh, as uh, Ambassador Asif Durrani is of the view that uh, with the Kabul takeover of the, by the Taliban, uh, we should be optimistic but very cautiously. However, Brigadier Khan uh, is very confident that the Afghan soil will not be used uh, against Pakistan, and that is what exactly the prime demand of Pakistan government would be from the Afghan Taliban. So, Brigadier Khan, uh, how uh, you seem to be very confident. Of course, this is going to be the primary demand from Pakistan's government, from the Afghan Taliban, that the Afghan soil should not be used. Do you think? the Afghan Taliban have the capacity to curtail such type of nefarious acti activities by some other elements or the rogue elements uh, that Afghan soil is not used against Pakistan? Look, before I answer your question, let me 
further clarify my position. I think the Taliban made a lot of mistakes during the last rule, uh, and they paid a price for that in 2001. But this time, I think they've come back uh, more moderate. They will follow the Islamic Sharia law, but they are not going to be those. Uh, they're not going to be very take very extreme actions that they understand will go very negatively with the international community and, of course, inside of Afghanistan itself. And they also, but remember that they're not angels. They're not perfect. Nobody is a perfect human being. They will, I expect that they will still make mistakes. They might even blunder here and there in the implementation of their policy. And remember, there is something known as resistance to change. In Pakistan, ever since Prime Minister Imran Khan came to power, it's been three years now, the bureaucracy in Pakistan has still not accepted the change. Their mindset still remains the same. So, in Afghanistan, I expect there will be conspiracies, there will be uh, actions by the rogue elements within the government, within the uh, uh, areas or people led by the warlords who would not, uh, would, would not, who are uh, in their hearts, they've not accepted the Taliban. That will happen. And remember, those rogue elements even within their army, which is now probably disbanded or what, they will get foreign support. There will be videos coming out from Afghanistan uh, trying to defame or belie the Taliban and saying, look, they're back to their old uh, inhuman acts. That is going to happen. I know that. So because you, get, you know. Brigadier so, Khan, this brings us to a very important point as far as the presence of Tariqa Taliban, Pakistan over there, the yes, Afghan soil is exactly. concerned. I mean, they were involved in uh, many heinous terrorist acts over here in Pakistan. One to be mentioned over here was Peshawar school terrorist attack uh, in which uh, the children were butchered. Uh, so, I mean, do you think that um, Pakistan will ensure from a, a demand that should be met from the Afghan Taliban that the TTP, which is banned in Pakistan, uh, should be cleared from the Afghan soil as well? Yes, the TTP and the bases, the training camps set up by the Indians and by rogue elements from within the Afghan government, yes, they will have to be disbanded. And also, some of those uh, people in the TTP who are wanted by the government of Pakistan for their terrorist acts in Pakistan, whether it is Balochistan or whether it is KP. For example, the Dasu uh, terrorist attack recently, in which uh, nine Chinese uh, lost their lives, and of course, many Pakistanis also, uh, and the Lahore Johar Town attack, they were masterminded from Afghan soil. And the government of Pakistan and our security agencies know exactly from where it happened and who were the people who masterminded it. So obviously, I, I expect that at the uh, at the government to government level, at the level of the uh, of our security agencies and their counterparts in Afghanistan, uh, there will be a lot of discussions, uh, an exchange of uh, information, and with the intelligence sharing also, so as to facilitate the uh, Afghan government into getting rid of those uh, training camps and bases. This is uh, this this should happen, and I'm sure that this must already be discussed between the two governments. You see, uh, somebody reported, one of our leading anchors in the Pakistani media, that our DGISI has had almost 24 visits to Kabul and many such visits to Doha when we were trying to facilitate the uh, American and the Taliban peace agreement. So that means that there is a scope uh, and there is a, 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 a scope for uh, intelligence sharing, scope for cooperation in this respect. And uh, as I said, Pashtun Tahafud movement, uh, they, that has also to be, you know, uh, the, their supplies and their support, that has to be cut off also. So all these, I'm sure, are going to be discussed. What I'm trying to say, and I just heard a report two days ago, I, I cannot confirm, that the Tariq-e-Taliban 
you know, uh, somebody asked me a one, um, uh, the, the, their uh, spokesman, as to what are the relation with the Tariq Taliban Pakistan. They said, look, they are different, we are different. Uh, we are not, we are Mujahideen, we are freedom fighters. We are not terrorists. So I think the Afghan Taliban, they understand the dynamics of this Tariq Taliban business and the Daesh business. If you remember, there have been a lot of terrorist attacks in Afghanistan and Kabul in the last one and a half year. And with the, the, the Taliban did not claim responsibility. They said, we are not, we are not responsible for these attacks. And they were being done by other, um, uh, some other hostile groups, you know, whatever was the plan. But the, the uh, Taliban, the Afghan Taliban, I doubt if they will come to, they will try, they will protect the Daesh people or they will protect the uh, Tariq Taliban Pakistan uh, from, uh, you know, uh, in a way uh, that uh, sort of encourages them, the TTP, to keep up their activities in Pakistan. I doubt if this is going to happen because one has to understand that this time they're coming with a very, very different mindset. And they have said very clearly, no, this is not going to be, there's going to be no more war. There's going to be no more bloodshed in this country. Exactly, this so point, Mr. Dhani, what do you say? My, do you my agree with... my, my, just, just one sentence, what I want to say, let's give peace a chance in Afghanistan. Let's give the Taliban a chance to settle down in Afghanistan rather than being pessimistic or being cautiously optimistic. You know, okay, I'll go, uh, I'll I'll go with this point to Mr. Okay. Durrani. Mr. Durrani, um, Brigadier Khan is of the view there is a huge uh, scope of intelligence sharing and uh, there is, uh, he's very optimistic that uh, the uh, Afghan Taliban have come up with a new mindset and they won't allow the groups like TTP and other groups, uh, hostile groups to uh, use the Afghan soil, especially against Pakistan. And uh, since we have seen uh, that they have taken over Kabul, uh, very peacefully without any bloodshed happening over there. And uh, pa uh, Pakistan's Federal Inf uh, Minister for Information, Fawad Chaudhry, also said that Pakistan welcomes the peaceful transition. What do you say about this? Well, uh, uh, whatever Brigadier Saab is saying is, uh, sounds uh, milk and honey. Uh, he's talking about milk and honey. So, uh, well, that is his uh, prerogative. And uh, since I'm not privy to what Taliban will be assuring, perhaps Brigadier Saab has more uh, access to the Taliban, so perhaps he may sound so definitive. But what I can say, uh, having observed Afghanistan uh, since the Soviet arrival uh, in Afghanistan in 1979, when I was a journalist, and then in the foreign service uh, from 86 till 2018, in 32 years as active uh, diplomat and uh, practitioner. Uh, th uh, that trains me to uh, assess the situation in a manner that uh, you can come to right conclusions. So here, therefore, uh, when I say I will not be euphoric, so please uh, allow me uh, this luxury to be not to be euphoric. When I say that I'm cautiously optimistic, allow me to, to be cautiously optimistic because we have yet to see how Taliban behave. And we have yet to, and the second thing is that uh, we can allow Taliban, it's not me or Pakistan. It would be the whole entire world which had any truck with the Taliban or with Afghanistan, they will be watching Afghanistan. So, therefore, whatever, uh, you know, uh, analysis we want to conduct on this particular issue, so we have to look at all the pros and cons which are there. Right now, as I said earlier, uh, you know, it is too good to be true, whatever Taliban spokesman has been saying there. But the question is, and he was also firm that uh, it has to be within the tenets of Islam. Now, here lies the catch that their definition and their interpretation of Islam, uh, whether it also gels with elsewhere in the Muslim world, whether for them, the people in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and uh, uh, Turkmenistan, are they really, they fit uh, 
to the definition of the Muslims. Would the Bosnian Muslims, who are quite Western in their outlook, but they are Muslims, would that fit into the definition? So these are the issues. And now they, uh, we should not try to mix the culture and religion. Pashtun culture is conservative, so is Afghan culture very conservative. So in that conservative framework, whatever, whatever picture emerges in Afghanistan has yet to be seen. They talk about the rights of the women as per the tenets of Islam. Now, I don't know uh, how uh, they are going to define that. Uh, this is just not enough that for the time being in 24 hours, if uh, uh, a uh, one anchor person and choose a Talib wearing a hijab, but of course not the shuttlecock boka, or for that matter in the press conference, if there are some women, they, they so uh, because even Western uh, female journalists, they were wearing rather more conservative hijab as compared to Afghan women. These are the things, these are for the time being, these suit to the optics for the time being. What I'm trying to say is the statecraft, how the Taliban uh, dispensation or Taliban-led dispensation behaves in future, that would be very important. Uh, so here, that's why my advice uh, would be, you have to tread very carefully. Those in our analysis also, we have to uh, tread very carefully. They, you cannot be definitive in politics. Mind my, mark my words. You cannot be definitive in your uh, uh, diplomacy, if I may allow to say, because. The Mr. Durrani, go ahead, please. Yeah, the, my soft words does not mean that I've given up my position or my firmness. <laughs> the question is, you have to be flexible, but at the same time, you can be firm. So here we are talking about whether the problems which Pakistan faced, you began with the problem we faced because of the India, uh, Indian environment uh, and uh, the use of Afghan soil. So for us, that is the focus. We have to, for us, the criteria would be that how this Taliban led the, uh, dispensation behaves vis-a-vis -vis India. Fine, we may have the confidence. But I'm not sure about the TTP because what I see, they, ideologically, they are the same. So therefore, would ideologically they are going to, uh, you know, part their ways? I have my doubts. So therefore, I will be careful. Uh, whatever the uh, TTP people, uh, leaders said uh, to the CNN while sitting on the Afghan side, and uh, Taliban knew, and they, uh, in fact, uh, they are uh, operating from the areas which are under Taliban control, and they have been pers uh, pursuing their activities against Pakistan. Those, I think, Taliban will have to do some explanation. But this is not the forum where uh, we can say it. Uh, it has, again, time will tell. So it is very important that we have to look, uh, give some time, maybe uh, how this uh, new dispensation comes up uh, for the time being. Well, I'll, I'll repeat myself again, that we have to be cautiously optimistic and let's see that how it unfolds and especially how it unfolds to the rest of the world. Reason being that uh, whether it's China or Russia, they recognize or not. They have not said it in definitive terms. They have just said it that they will have relationship with them. So relationship, even the United States still has relationship with the Taliban. They have not said And they entered into an agreement uh, that shows that they established the relationship. Uh, Taliban have not killed a single American soldier since February 2020. Shows the relationship that Taliban have with the Americans. And Taliban want to have relationship with the Americans in future. It means that uh, a dispensation led by Ashraf Ghani was, uh, if you can call them the American puppets, then a Taliban will have the relationship with the Americans if that turns out to be very cordial. So would we call uh, Taliban the American puppets? No. So these are the relationship in politics that suits their interests. It suited American interests to have uh, uh, Hamid Karzai or Ashraf Ghani to be a representative in Afghanistan, whether they were parachuted into Afghanistan or whatever dispensation they wanted to have it, they did the experiment, that experiment failed. So now this Taliban, whether they would uh, sue for de democracy, or when they talk about Islamic Emirates, then Islamic Emirates will have its own parameters. So we have yet to see. So I can go on, but uh, the problem is that you, uh, we cannot be definitive here. So we have to wait and watch. Thank you.
Okay, okay, Mr. Durrani, there is uh, one other point that I want to discuss with you. Uh, Mr. Ashok Swain, an Indian uh, political analyst, he is of the view in a tweet uh, recently, he said that Taliban are not any more exclusive Sunni Pashtun group as before. The Taliban have been substantially recruiting from Hazaras, Uzbeks and Tajiks for at least 10 years. Even one of the recent governors of the Taliban's shadow government in Sarepul province was a Hazara. So when you talk about the political dispensation or the inclusiveness in the uh, uh, new uh, government that will be formed in Afghanistan, uh, how do you see this uh, particular uh, take by Mr. Ashok Swain uh, uh, in the context of uh, what the, their past behavior was? Uh, well, I'm, uh, as Mr. Ashok Swain uh, uh, has rightly said it, these are the, the, you can say, symptoms. Right now, we, we will have to, these, uh, you know, are just reflections. But actual, uh, you know, uh, the taste of the pudding is then it's eating. So you have to give some time and then Taliban, but then we will see that how their inclusiveness is going to work. Right now, they have appointed uh, a Hazara as a governor because that Hazara was part of the Taliban movement. The question is, there are, uh, you know, uh, uh, big fault lines in the Afghan mosaic. There are uh, different factions, ethnic and religious minorities. So that's why though that delegation, which has recently been uh, in Islamabad, led by Mohawk, uh, I mean, Mr. Mohawkik and Ustad Khalili was there, uh, Salauddin Rabbani and uh, Yunus Kanuni were there. They represent different factions um, of the Afghan uh, ethnic, ethnic groups and religious groups. So uh, they are still not part of uh, the inclusiveness. So we have to see how it unfolds. So therefore, it is important that we should look at it very carefully and then make our opinion uh, once, uh, you know, something comes up. Um, I'm afraid, I mean, uh, we, uh, uh, while you analyze things, you cannot break the news. We, I mean, uh, analysts can't be in the business of breaking news. They can only, based on the news, they can analyze things. But at the same time, if the news is premature, if the news is new, so you have to be careful again. So this is what I'm sure Brigadier Sub knows it okay. in this situation. Okay, I, I I also, how you do that. Uh, okay, Brigadier Khan. Can I add also? Hello. Brigadier you... Khan, go ahead, please. What do you want to say? Yes. When I analyze the situation, I see what has happened in the last four days. Tomorrow, the Americans come back and bomb Afghanistan with daily cutters and the mother of all bombs is going to be a different situation. But since they're coming over and taking over Kabul in the last three days, my analysis of being positive is based on what the Taliban have shown and what they've done in the last three days. Yes, there are going to be many challenges. There are going to be many pitfalls. There will be conspiracies, as I said earlier. And remember, this time, the, the Taliban are lucky that they have good relations with the Chinese, they have good relations with the Russians. It is not just that sword in superpower American, uh, the United States that matters. The Chinese and the Russians matter more perhaps uh, than the Americans. If the Americans and the British decide after some time that it is not in their interest to remain cut off from the uh, uh, Taliban government in Afghanistan, and they need to have some stakes and maintain their uh, some form of presence, you know, uh, through economic linkages, through the IMF, to the World Bank, blah, blah, blah. Well, welcome. But remember, Pakistan works, uh, has a strategic partnership with China. We're working very closely with the Russians. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling that once the Afghan Taliban, they settle down, they restore order, which they're already trying to do to the to the best uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, the government has uh, starts implementing their policy. And remember, they've said repeatedly in the last three years that they have nothing against any religion or any ethnic group. For Muharram, see what is happening in Kabul. Uh, and, you know, the Taliban are providing good protection, full protection, which is good. This is what we want. This was not there 25 years earlier.
So, Begedia so, Khan, uh, one, one last comment from you, uh, uh, since we are very short of time. Uh, do yes. you think, since uh, Mr. Asif Durrani has uh, just mentioned that there are a lot of fault lines over there in Afghanistan, since we know that Afghan Taliban control more territory now after the Kabul takeover as compared to what they had under their control back in 2001, do you think they have the capacity to encompass uh, the whole of Afghanistan and bring it under control and make it more inclusive, whatever the future dispensation of the government happens to be there? Yes, why not? They control the borders. They control uh, well, all the major towns and provinces, whatever you say. They are appointing their own people at the uh, IC videos. Somebody is, uh, is sitting in the deputy commissioner office. Somebody is sitting in the uh, DIG's office, like that, you know. So they are beginning to now uh, get into the... Uh, uh, micros of the of the uh, of the governance and obviously law and order security they're telling the government the people not to be scared come back they're telling the women to come back and start working in the offices so as to and they're trying to create condition so that there's less of fear among the uh, uh, people the co the common citizens Kedia Khan, and you're of the view what? that uh, the Afghan Taliban are trying to create an atmosphere where there happens to be less fear. Brigadier Farooq Hamid Khan, yes. defense analyst, thank you very much for your time at Newswire. And Ambassador Asif Durrani, thank you for it as well. And with this, we come to the end of today's Newswire with more detailed analysis on other dimensions of what is happening in Afghanistan and what could be the future of Afghanistan. We'll be back with you for that. Stay tuned.